Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Comics Writer Pro Secrets. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about characterization, something that we'll drill into over several topics uh, when we get through this stuff. And I think that characterization is probably the most important aspect of storytelling. A good character versus a dull character will be the difference between a storyline that really uh, touches your imagination versus something that you will find eminently forgettable or boring. Um, it, it really drills down to the character every single time. And you'll find that character is so important that often when you have a characterization that's really good, you'll find that you'll be able to overlook issues with the story, whether there's something hokey going on or something strange going on that doesn't exactly make sense, because you get so invested in the character and so attached that that supersedes the other elements of the storytelling. And that's why the golden age and silver age of comics and stories uh, in science fiction and fantasy uh, really hold with us so well, even though by modern standards the plots may not be thought through all the way or maybe have some strange element to it that is just ridiculous or not realistic or whatnot, but we still love those characters and we still enjoy those stories so much more. It's because of the characterization that was put into those uh, stories. And that that is the big difference between a very solid writer and somebody who's not. You need to, and the first aspect of uh, characterization is really knowing your character. Now I sound, that sounds a lot like a platitude, something that doesn't really have a very applicable sense to it, but knowing your character is something you can apply and it's something that you can get to uh, figuring out uh, well before you even put pen to paper in your manuscript. I once took a writing class from J. Michael Straczynski, who is the creator of Babylon 5, and he always talked about knowing your characters as, as something super important. He would actually go as far as to say, you know, you should actually be able to envision your character when they're, when they're getting up in the middle of the night with no lights on and they bump their uh, knee on a coffee table, how will they react? Will they, will they go... <sighs> Will they, will they shout out something? Will they, will they swear? Uh, that, that sort of knowledge of exactly how they'll speak and how they'll react to situations is what, what makes a character a character and something that's uh, got some depth. And little, little quirks like that are the, the little easy things that you can do uh, to put into your manuscript to be able to figure out uh, what, where the depth in the character is. All right, um, so something that I do in uh, Flying Sparks is if you look at my character, Paul, Paul is a, a side character and he appears uh, periodically. He always has like a snarky attitude to things. He's always like making little quips and jokes backs uh, to lighten the mood in, in the most tense situations. He handles his uh, coping situations by doing that. Um, and also uh, his other big thing that he does all the time is he calls Johnny boss. So you'll, you'll see he's the only person throughout Flying Sparks that goes, boss, boss, hey boss, what's going on boss? That's his, his words that he's using that identify him as a character. Whenever you see those, that dialogue, you wouldn't even have to look at the character because you'd know that that dialogue is Paul uh, almost every time until later in the series when, when somebody else adopts that. But I make a joke out of it and the joke works. Uh, it's in volume three because uh, you've, been, you've been reading through for the first two volumes of Paul using that character quirk. And so the joke at his expense uh, actually becomes a plot point and it becomes something that's uh, pretty interesting and to draw attention to. That's all because of in-depth characterization and because of my knowing the way Paul speaks and, and, and exemplifying that through the dialogue. Now there's an easy way to get to know your characters and that you can do this before you ever set pen to paper for the actual draft manuscript. What I do is I, is I write a character sheet uh, before I do things and uh, I've, got, I've got one up on my computer right now um, which I will kind of read off to you, just kind of some details. It doesn't have to be exactly like this. You don't have to use my process 100%. Uh, you, can, you can use what works for you, change it around a little bit uh, for your needs. But I usually make about a three page character uh, statement here. Let's see if I can show you the screen real quick. Um, you'll, you'll see, um, it's called Guillermo del Toro's character cheat sheet template. I'm not sure if he actually had anything to do with it, uh, but somebody gave this to me uh, a long time ago and I've been using it since then. This uh, character, which I'm showing on the screen, is uh, my character Tamar from uh, The Stars Entwined. And I've got a whole list of things here, which I'll, which I'll read to you kind of what uh, that is going on with that. All right. Cool. This is my uh, my low tech way of doing things. I, I guess I need to get a computer with screen sharing and all that fancy stuff. 
uh, but uh, but uh, this is how we're gonna do things in YouTube for now. All right, so I've got my name. I put my name on there. I got age, height, build, eyes, hair, external characteristics, physical ailments. Those sorts of things are just the basic physical things that you'll see. You probably don't need this as much in comics because the artist will draw this for you, so you'll see exactly what uh, the character looks like. Um, but for for pros, you'll you'll probably want a list of uh, their physical uh, characteristics. Then I get into things she likes. Um, so she's very big into obedience. She's very big into her homeworld. She loves her ship because uh, she's a ship captain. Uh, she's into politics, history, strategy. Uh, she's into uh, del delicacies uh, in her culture's food. Um, she likes to go out in nature, um, and she is really into efficiency. I think she dislikes, she's really, uh, she's a control freak, so she hates losing control. She hates people telling secrets. She hates half-truths uh, because those are, uh, you know, things that uh, are, are lead to dishonesty and, uh, and things like that. Um, so then I go to main qualities. Uh, which I've got, she's positive. Uh, pos her positive qualities is that she's uh, thoughtful, good analytical skills, understanding of political situations, uh, has a clear vision. Her negatives is that she can be paranoid. She's stubborn, guarded, withdrawn. And, and I, just, I just make lists as I, as I kind of feel out the character here. Um, the, it's got something for colors, uh, so you can kind of envision the colors that uh, kind of circulate around the characters. It's kind of useful. Um, then I write a full biography which will be her backstory. And I've got this, uh, I've got her backstory, uh, which goes for about a page and a half. And uh, her initial disposition in the story, which is, uh, which is, which is where the character's starting the story. Um, what's her main dramatic motivation? What would what, what I want to happen to her as a character? Um, and, and where does, uh, what, what gets her, what causes her to, to go into action? And then her final disposition, where I want her to end up as a character. And keeping these things in mind, uh, you can uh, make an arc of a character over the course of a story so that you know the, the story and the plot impacts the character. And it also helps you uh, have guidelines of how the character will then uh, shape herself to, to the plot and, and twist the plot around. Sometimes the characters don't do uh, what they're supposed to uh, when, you, when you get into that and you're gonna have to change your plot for things. Um, and I actually detail that out in a after after the disposition elements in a character change. Uh, what what do I want the character to change over the story? And that's how I create a compelling character throughout a story. That's my that's my base knowledge where I where I really get to know my character right away. And you'll notice that I spent probably the most uh, part on her backstory and and all that because her backstory really is what's going to inform her character dispositions, her likes, dislikes, uh, etc. I usually write that first and then come to the dislikes and all that based on what the backstory has. I've got a character right now um, in a story I'm writing, and the character was a soldier, and he's trying not to do violence anymore, and he wants to be a bard, he wants to be a musician, he wants to be an artist. And, uh, and so he's, he's trying to replace uh, his uh, rage and anger and violence and put it all in music. Uh, and of course, he's being put in situations where he's uh, really not able to do that very well. And that's, uh, that's what creates conflict, creates an interesting character, and, uh, and that uh, distaste for violence is going to be a hallmark of what that character is. So um, those, this, these are sort of the tricks you can use uh, to start to know your character in advance, know what they like, know what they dislike, know who they like, know who they dislike. Um, so what, what, uh, what political party are they? What, what, are, they, uh, what are they striving to be? Uh, what do they like to eat uh, in the evenings? You know, all these little details add up and you put in a few, you hear a few there, and you stay consistent with them, people will have a fleshed out character who feels real to them. So that's it. Hope uh, that's been helpful for you. This has been another Comics Writers Pro Secrets. Please hit the like and subscribe button if you enjoy my writing tips and uh, go check out my books. Thanks a lot. Bye.